In the last tutorial, we talked about how to create a new user to administer or log into your WordPress site. In this tutorial, we're going to take that a step further and show you how to give different levels of access and different privileges to your users when they have access to your site. Obviously, you don't want to just create a new user and let them completely administer your site. Um, with the right level of access, it's possible to completely damage or destroy your entire website with not too much trouble. So obviously, if you have a lot of people who are going to be writing blog posts or editing your pages or having otherwise pretty strong access to your site, you're not going to want to give them access to certain areas. You want to maintain some level of control. This tutorial will show you how to do that. So what you're going to want to do, let's go to the Edit User window. So you're going to go to Users on the left side here. And what I'm in right now, this window, is the Edit User menu. And if you looked at our last tutorial, we created a new user, and that was called Test User. So what you will do to get to the screen is just click Users. And you'll see Test User here. He's the third item down. So we'll click this. And a window will show up allowing you as the administrator to make edits to the user here. Um, you can also change their first name, last name, pretty much anything you want. But what we're going to focus on is the role. Now, this is not sorted in order of how much privilege each uh, role is assigned to in WordPress. For example, the administrator, the second item down, actually has the most power. So what I'm going to do is go piece by piece to show you uh, which role has actually the most um, power to the least. So we're going to start with administrator. Once you get your new WordPress site, at least through our company, we give you administrator access so you can make all the changes that you need to make. If you're an administrator, you're going to have all these options over here, and you can add plugins, widgets, um, install different WordPress themes, pretty much anything you'd like. But when you create a new user, you're probably not going to want to assign administrative level access. So the next item down, which has a fair amount of restriction, is the editor role. The editor role is the next level down, and you can think of it as someone who you want to be able to make edits and changes to your WordPress pages and posts and give them plenty to work with, but you don't want them to be able to add plugins and widgets and do the really anything that would potentially make your site vulnerable or if they make a mistake, could take it offline. This window shows what the logged in panel is going to look like if you go in if you have an editor role. So what you'll have here is an editor has the ability to edit posts, publish posts, um, add links, media, pages, comments. They can do quite a bit. Um, however, the difference, and this is a key difference, you'll notice they don't have the ability to add plugins. Um, they can't manage themes and widgets. That's something only an administrator can do. So the next level down is actually author. And what an author can do is publish their own posts and edit their own posts. Now, remember the difference between posts and pages. A page is something on your WordPress site that is always displayed. It doesn't rotate in and out depending on what date you make the publish or you publish the page. Um, that's really what post does. Post is your blog. So if you give someone only author level access, what they'll get when they log in is something like this where they can add, edit, and change their posts. They can upload media to their posts, but all they get is access to the blog. So when they log in, this is what they'll see. They'll be able to go to their posts that they've written. And here's another thing about author. They can only add or edit their posts. So they may see the posts written by a number of your other WordPress users, but the only changes they can actually make are to their posts. The next level down is contributor. And a contributor is even more limited than an author because if you're a contributor, all you can do is make edits to posts. You can't even publish them. So what you'll have is access to your posts, and this is what your um, window is going to look like when you log in as a contributor. You don't even have access to upload media. Um, an author can upload um, different bits of media to their posts, but as a contributor, all you can do is have access to posts that the administrator has granted you access to, and you can make edits, make text bold, italic, whatever you'd like to do, and then save changes, but you can't actually publish posts. Um, it's actually a very useful level. So if you have a lot of people writing blog posts on your site, but you want to make sure that um, you get a look at these posts before they go and publish them live, you may want to give them only contributor level access. This less, And then finally, the smallest level of access you can possibly give to a user is the subscriber level. Essentially, you can't do anything. Um, all you get is the ability to enter your profile information. Um, you can change your first name, last name. You can, basically, you can just edit your profile. You have no real access to any features here um, on the left side panel. So 
you're pretty much stuck as a subscriber only being able to subscribe. Now this is actually a very useful level if let's say you have subscribers to your blog and you want people who want to be able to access your different features and make subscribe or have the features to go along with your subscription but not actually be able to make any edits to your site. Um, so this should be if you have a lot of users that want to access your site maybe the default role that you'll want to set for them but you won't want them to actually make edits or changes to your posts or pages um, or have any level of access. So once again these different levels that you can set for your users are very important. Um, you don't want to get too, you don't want to give too much access to too many people. Like too many administrators usually is asking for trouble unless you can really manage them well. Um, and there is another thing called a super admin, but that's more for networked sites and blogs, and we're not going to get into that here. So one thing to remember: these are not in order, and the order of access for most of these goes: administrator, editor, author, contributor, subscriber, and that order.